What's happening, YouTube? My name is Matt Faircloth, and my company is called the DeRosa Group. The question is, should you use modular technology that cuts down my carrying cost, that ups my project velocity so I can go build more houses? It's not a silver bullet. Uh, if it were, everybody would be doing it. Before we go further, what is modular construction? <laughs> We're a real estate company dedicated to transforming lives through real estate. If you're curious about us, when you hear what we do to transform lives through real estate, just go to derosagroup.com and you can hear all about us. You can pick up a copy of my book, Raising Private Capital, or you can go to Bigger Pockets or Amazon to get it as well. And you can join our insiders community by going to derosagroup.com forward slash insiders to join our inside community with direct access to me and my team and all kinds of cool education and networking opportunities. People email questions to help me at derosagroup.com. That is help me at derosagroup.com. And I'll answer your question right here on the air for you and everyone else to learn from. Today's question is a good one. This comes from Trevor out in San Diego. Thank you for your question. Trevor's uh, been focusing on fix and flips for the last, the last couple of years. So it's been going well. The San Diego market has been going, what? And the rental price has just been going, what too, right? So Trevor's looking for new and unique ways to continue his business and to keep things going in the San Diego space. So he's looked to other methods of construction. And that comes to today's topic, which is modular construction. Before we go further, what is modular construction? There are different ways that you can build something. You can build a house. The common term for building a house, people have done it for the last hundred years, is to you pour a foundation and you just build the house with lumber and you frame it up and that's called stick framing. And that is building it on site, shipping the big pallets of lumber out the site, shipping the trusses and all the stuff out to the site and the sheetrock and all this other stuff. And you just build it and you bring in different crews and you just bring things in when you need it. That's called stick framing. There are benefits to it. Now, one of the biggest benefits to stick framing is if you really know what you're doing, you can hire the framing crew, the plumber, the HVAC uh, company, the electrician, and you can GC the job yourself by keeping caught and keep costs down by using local relationships and direct vendors to do just those specific trades in the property. It's the biggest benefit to stick framing is you're not hiring one company that builds a whole house for you, one GC, you're hiring individuals. Now, you gotta be a seasoned construction company or a seasoned investor to do that. And a lot of people that do that have a construction manager that works for them, that works for their company that just orchestrates the trades that come in. That's stick framing. The most popular way to build a house, there's even ways that are coming into the market now, like poured concrete and houses built by robots and stuff like that. Your, you know, 3D houses to use the right term for it. So a lot of that's there, but something that's been around for a while is modular homes. And it goes all the way back to the Sears. I used to live in a town that had a lot of Sears houses where literally you could buy a house out of the Sears catalog and it pretty much would show up as a kit and you'd put it together, like a kit house, right? So they called them. Um, and so modular homes have come a long way. And what a modular home really is, it is a home that's built in a factory. There's a picture of a factory that's out somewhere else, not where you're building the house. In that factory, they built a box. And this box contains the framing, the walls, the plumbing, the electrical, everything. And then they put this box on a truck and it gets shipped out to site and they take these boxes with a crane and piece them together and they go together like Legos. The Lego boxes snap together and they have the plumbing, the electrical, the connections in between the boxes and they connect those up and they're all done. And it's like 80% built in the factory, 20% uh, assembled and then finished on site. There's some finished work that has to put on site. You have to tie the boxes together in the mating and getting techie and stuff like that. But that is in essence what modular is. And there's stuff that's a hybrid between the two, it's something called panelized construction where just the walls show up on a truck. Then you put the walls together and the walls have the uh, electrical and plumbing in them. It's called panelized construction. That's something that's coming into the space that's new. And as I mentioned, 3D printing and stuff like that are all other technologies that are coming in. And there's other hybrid models of the two, but modular is something that's been around for a very long time. The question is, should you use modular technology, right? Here are a few pluses of modular technology. In most areas, and likely in California as well, my friend Trevor, if you, if you stick frame a house, you have to go to the, you have to go to the local town. You'll have to turn in your building plans. 
They will have to approve those building plans and they'll have to come out at every iteration of the project and say, yep, you did your plumbing, right? Yep, you did your electrical, right? Yep, you did your HVAC, right? And likely they're not going to say, yep. They're going to say, well, the plumbing, uh, you know, I don't like the way you put that line right there. Can you move that over three feet? And I think that's better to the code and it's better for fire or whatever. They might pick your brain apart or pick you apart because a lot of times these inspectors need to justify their what they're up to. And so they're going to find something that they need you to do, a little tweak. Maybe it slows you down, maybe it doesn't. But, but especially during COVID, you have to wait for that inspector to come out. You can't work until they come out and inspect your project, give you a, an approval to keep going in that. So that's for stick framing you have to live with. But for modular, the boxes ship already inspected and approved. And so when they show up to site, the local town inspector can't say, you know, I'm not sure if I'm happy with that plumbing. It's the box has already been inspected. It's already been approved at the factory. So you can't look at this box, Mr. Inspector. All he can look at is the connection pieces between the boxes. He's allowed to look at that, but he can't look at the inside of the box. It's already been approved by somebody else, by an inspector at the factory. Okay. Big, big, big factor. So if you live in a bureaucratic area where the inspectors can be tough to deal with, modular can be a great thing because you can expedite the whole process and not have to deal with the local inspectors, but for but for a few things. Additionally, you don't have to deal with the weather. This is all in a protected covered factory. You're dealing with operational efficiencies. So there is, you know, metal or uh, wood that gets reused and sheetrock that gets reused and metal that gets reused in the structures and things like that. So there's very little waste, which drives down cost. There is a operational velocity that happens. So most modular construction from ordering your boxes and them starting order, starting making your boxes at the factory to the time your boxes are dropped on site. Last time I checked, which was a while ago, it was eight weeks. So let's say eight to 10 weeks. Now, cost is a different thing. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't talked about cost yet, but job site velocity and timeline gets compressed a ton when it comes to uh, modular construction, because you're not dealing with, well, this plumber is four weeks out and because he can't, he's on some other job and he can't get get out to my job site and whatever. So you're not going to get slowed down by vendors or slowed down by a lot of different things or by weather, whatever. It's in, a, it's in the factory, it gets shipped out you know, eight to 10 weeks or so, give or take. Huge factor. Here are a few downsides to modular. The, it has been said that sometimes in modular factories, in the factory, that the quality of worksmanship can be compromised. And it might not be the same quality as somebody who's been a 20-year veteran working in the field that's been framing houses in the field by their own two hands. There, there may be some industry experience issues in factories, especially with COVID, because it's very hard to get labor these days, especially in manufacturing operations. So I would be questioning the quality of workmanship in the factory at the modular. And if somebody that is a modular company is watching this, forgive me, I'm not coming after your industry. It's just known on the other side of it and our, on, on, on the buying side that it is something you have to be careful about is, you know, well, they're only supposed to put eight nails in that piece of wood with it could be 30 because the person just has a nail gun and they enjoy using it or something like that. So it can be some issues in workmanship in, in modular factories. Leave it, leave it there. The next thing that happens with modular is there is the, the logistics of transiting these things. You think about this. You've got a big 18 wheeler that's got, you might be seen these things driving around the highway. It's like a 60 foot long by 18 foot wide, enormous box. that has got a kitchen and tile floors and bathrooms and everything else inside it. There are logistics with that. And there's going to be logistics in getting that box to your job site. If you're in an urban environment, like an urban downtown, be even further logistics. I've seen modular boxes get picked up over one property and delivered over the rooftop of another property and all that. Now imagine the air rights you had to negotiate and stuff and that can up your cost as well. So it can bring in logistical things. If you're building Greenfield out in the middle of nowhere, it won't be as difficult as it will be if you're building in an area that's dense and there's things around it. There are other downsides to modular. The one thing that's a misconception that I think that my friend Trevor that sent this email had a misconception on as well is cost. The modular factories are using the same wood that the guy stick framing in the field is going to use. The plumbing materials are all the same. Everything's the same. The, the HVAC, the plumbing material, the electrical material, the wood material, the sheetrock, it's all the same. Maybe they've got a little bit of buying power, but that's like maybe five to 10%. And they're probably not going to pass all that on to you. That's going to be where they make their margins is on buying power. Except the modular factory does because they got to make money too. It's not a hobby. I get it. They got to make money. You're not going to see a big material savings cost. Like I said, the laborer working in a modular factory is likely not earning what somebody working out in the field is going to be earning. There's also additional levels of labor in a modular factory as well. It's Supervisors, higher ups, things like that. 
sticks and bricks. They have to pay for the physical plant. They got to, you know, own, own or lease or pay real estate taxes on this huge factory. It, it has been my experience that modular construction will save you anywhere between maybe 5%, maybe 10% if you get lucky, but likely you might not save anything. And it might be rare, comparable right in line with stick framing, given the cost of goods and everything like that. But the biggest thing you save on is time. You can monetize time by saying, it'll take me 10 months to stick frame this house or two months to build it with a, with a modular technology, or at least to have the boxes delivered. So maybe a total job cycle of like four to five months versus a stick framing job of 10 to 12 months. So maybe I cut it in half, that cuts down my carrying cost, that ups my project velocity. So I go build more houses and recycle my cash over and over again and do more deals if I'm building modular. As you can tell, it's something we've researched quite a bit. It's something we take seriously at DeRosa Group. And so it's something we will likely get into is building apartment buildings by modular. We've flirted with it. We danced with it. I've toured modular factories thinking about getting into this game. And so I know enough about it that I'm willing to talk to you guys about it today. It's not a silver bullet. Uh, if it were, everybody would be doing it, but it is something worth to be considered. And oh, one more thing. It's a big thing about where the factory is. You cannot buy a modular box from a factory in Denver and ship it to Pennsylvania. The liability of crossing the country with this big, you know, multi-ton box full of all these valuables. The box is probably worth 40, 50 grand to cross the country with something like that. It's just not feasible. And so you've got to find a factory that's close enough to your job site that they're willing to build it and willing to transit. Most of the time, the factories will tell you that if it's, it's got to be like a half a day drive um, or less from their factory to your job site. So that's a big factor, Trevor, is you got to find yourself a factory that's close enough to San Diego where you are that's willing to get you boxes. So that's probably going to be one of your limiting factors. So that maybe will give you some guidance on where to start, who to start talking to first. Good stuff on modular construction, guys. Please uh, leave some comments. I don't ask you guys to share enough. So please share this video with other people. Help us build our subscriber base. Love to have more friends here on the DeRosa Group YouTube channel to enjoy what, we up, what we're up to. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget, help me at derosagroup.com is where you guys want to send your questions. Thank you for watching and have a great and profitable week.